on, everyone. Howdy. California. Yeah, yo. What's up? Dry tattoo, what's up, brother? How you doing? Howdy, Paul. Star Idaho here. Is that the is there a city called Star? Bolivia. Interesting. Virginia Beach, you get, shut the shut the front door. Born and raised in VB. So yeah. There you go. How about that? Star, I wonder if it's I mean that's gotta be related to something. Are you are you kidding me? Seriously, two people from Virginia Beach in the in the chat? You guys are messing with me, aren't you? Star Idaho. Is there a star fort there? Yeah, so I wanted to just come on here just because. Just because. I don't have anything on the agenda other than, obviously, I like to promote the podcast over on YouTube. We just did a, a podcast about dinosaurs. I know, podcast, you know, dinosaurs. I mean, like, lots of people don't care about them. I'm telling you guys, a Christian, you should care. Oh, gang run, green run. Yes, sir. Yeah, so as a Christian, I think we should care because, again, it's the science that contradicts the Bible. And so we it's interesting. We have my buddy, uh, Voice of Reason, and we have Brian, Demon Racers. And we, we all have, I think, actually, Brian and Luke were very similar in their takes. Mine was the one that I was, I was probably the more of the skeptical person in the, in the podcast. But, um, yeah. I'm curious if you guys haven't checked that out. If you guys have not followed me on uh, YouTube, go check that out over there. I've got we've got so many podcasts over there, but yes, that's a good one. Two hours talking about dinosaurs and the science behind dinosaurs. I put air quotes in there because I don't really believe it's science. <laughs> Why did they said dinosaurs and not dragons? Okay. I'm gonna do my I'm do I'm gonna do my quick take about why I think the dinosaur thing is completely stupid. I'm gonna do my cliff notes. You should watch it, but here's my cliff notes. Explain to me why I should even entertain this stupid idea of dinosaurs. Okay. Yes, I said it. the di the The whole concept of dinosaurs is stupid. It's non scientific. Okay, so they found some bones and they found some fossils. Big deal, right? Big deal. You got more than that because you have to have more than that because what we're, what we're expected to believe at this point is, so when I say I think dinosaurs is stupid and not is a fake concept, people are like, this crazy Christian doesn't believe in giant monsters. Yeah, I don't believe in the, giant mo the, the ancient giant monsters that ruled the world at one point. No, I don't believe that. For one... Dinosaur. Let's, like I said, just break. This is my was my take in the in the podcast. Let's just break down the word. Dinosaur comes from a Greek word, and so dinosaur come, means either terrible lizard or monstrous lizard. Guess what? The science now says the dinosaurs weren't actually lizards. They were actually birds, right? Okay. So so right off the bat. The name is nonsensical because now they're not monstrous lizards. They're literally monstrous birds. And, and the modern science is literally saying that chickens are what dinosaurs are now. They call them avian dinosaurs. Okay, so you're talking about two different things now. You're talking about birds and lizards. Okay, because again, let's just be technical with what the words mean. Monstrous lizard... And then obviously chickens are not monstrous in any way. This is what the science wants you to believe is that these apex predators, like Godzilla, right? I mean, that's literally what the story of the dinosaurs is. Primordial monsters that once ruled the earth before whatever happened, you know, like like literally they talk do you know when do you know when the comet supposedly hit the earth? that destroyed the dinosaurs. 
It was 66.6 million years ago. Or 66 million years ago, whatever. Of course it's got to be 666. It's so, like, this stuff is so stupid. I mean, again, they found some bones, and then later they found some bones that actually had soft tissue in them, so they could literally, they really weren't that old, right? And then the scientists lied about it. And they wouldn't actually release the, the data to the public. And then, so I'm supposed to believe these people now? Again, they can't even get their story straight. They're, are they birds or are they lizards? Okay, so if they're birds, stop calling them terrible lizards. And if you just, and if you just found skeletons with no skin on them, I, we break this down in the podcast. There's, there's a good, there's a good uh, article from the Daily Mail about like artists when they're given skeletons, just skeletons, like existing animals. You, you just have the skeleton and they say, hey, sketch whatever you think this is. And what do they sketch? Something that looks completely different than what the an actual animal looks like. This stuff is fantasy, guys. Like, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. And so, Luke is a little different than me in a lot of ways. <laughs> that He's conspiratorial, but I think he's, he's, he's too analytical, in my opinion. I'm not saying he needs to change, but whatever. He's, he's analytical in the way that if he says, when you say dinosaurs are not real, people laugh at you. And I'm like, I don't care. It's, it's, to me, it's kind of like, that if you're playing a hand of poker, right? The guys with the dinos the guys promoting the dinosaurs have nothing. They have like an ace high. I've got a full house. I'm like, I want to see your cards now. I'm not I'm not going to play poker and pretend like you actually have a good hand. They've got nothing. And so the what the truth is, the dinosaurs are not a species, they are a narrative. And the narrative is contrary to what the Bible says. And that's why I say, this is stupid. Like I said, this is, this is not even worth entertaining because they didn't find dinosaur bones until like 200 years ago. Even though man has been digging in the ground for forever, for as long as man's been around. It's like I said, that, that's the thing that makes me just like, if, if that's not sus to you, I don't know what is. That in the, in the age of evolution, and the Big Bang, the heliocentric model, all of the things coming out around the same time, that's when they start finding dinosaurs. What's going on, brother? Yeah, is, the timing is interesting for all of human history. And again, so people defending the, the dinosaur idea versus the, with the Bible, almost like it's like a defense of saying like, hey, we're, we, we're, we Christians aren't crazy. We can, there was dinosaurs on the ark. Were there? Like, are you confident enough to say that, that Noah took these giant monsters onto the ark? <laughs> these, these giant chicken Tyrannosaurus rexes, whatever they call them now? We don't know that, and we don't have to defend that. Like I said, you finding a bone does not actually, it's not a defense. It's not an argument to anything. That's what I'm saying. I don't have to entertain that. So when people say, well, guess what? The behemoth is in the Bible, and the behemoth was clearly a, a dinosaur. No, it's not. I don't have to. I don't agree with that. Read Job 40. People always bring up the fact that the behemoth has a tail like a cedar. Oh, so, so it's really big like a cedar tree. That's not, that's not actually what that verse says. It says behemoth's tail is stiff like a cedar. It's not actually. It didn't say it's big like it. Actually, in Amos, I think it was Amos 2, 9, I looked it up. The Bible says the Amorites were as tall as cedars. Okay, so the, the giants, the, the biblical giants, or the Bible, the, the giants that the Bible describes, at, in the book of Amos, it literally says the giants were as tall as the cedars. So to me, that's what dinosaurs are meant to do. They're meant to obviously destroy all ideas of mythology and it's supposed to disprove the Bible. Because, again, then you go into Job 41 where there's the Leviathan and everyone's like, oh, the Leviathan's a dinosaur. The Leviathan is a dragon. Literally, the Leviathan in the Bible is a fire-breathing dragon. 
Look up Job 41, fire breathing dragon. That's what it that's what it describes. If anything, Job 41 literally describes Godzilla. Some monster that lives in the in the sea but also breathes fire. It says it's the king of the sons of pride or that it's the king of the monsters in some other translation. That's literally what Godzilla is. So that's my main point of all that, that nonsense about dinosaurs. It's like that I believe that this is what dinosaurs are meant to do. It's meant to obviously point to something that completely just annihilates the biblical timeline because there's these things that live far beyond man, like way before man. When if you do believe the Bible, it's more likely if there was these animals on the earth, based on if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you would believe these animals live contemporarily with man. So man would have wrote about these animals, right? Whatever they were. Then if, if they were writing about anything, they were writing about dragons. I mean, because dragons are not, are not unique to any certain place on the earth. You know, obviously, you even talk to like, people like Marco Polo wrote about dragons, and that was like... Was that like the 1400s or something like that? 1300s? Yeah. I mean, like I so said, Marco Polo was writing about that, that the people in the Asia rode, rode dragons. <laughs> Take that for what you will. In the same way that, do you know that the most the famous explorers, like Magellan, all the ones that you learned about in school and you learned about their journals and what they wrote about the new world when they discovered a place with, <laughs> with tons of people in the place that they discovered? Again, how do you discover a, a continent that already has people living there? Whatever. Whatever. Don't, don't let that confuse you. They all wrote about seeing giants when they got to the Americas. But you know what? They didn't teach you that in your history book. Why not? It's in, like literally the same journals that said Magellan wrote, sailed around the world, that he circumnavigated the earth or the globe. It's said that he encountered giants. Americano Vespucci, who America certainly was not named after, wrote about giants. Columbus wrote about giants. Uh, was, it, um, was it Alfonso de Ojeda wrote about giants? Soto wrote about giants. All these famous explorers wrote about giants. But you know what? We're, we're told that the giants weren't real. We're told the dinosaur, I mean, our, our dragons were not real. But we're told that there was a time when giant monsters ruled the earth without man there. And people think that is believable. But the things that the, the people who actually did things on this earth wrote about, nah, that's just made up. They, they accomplished all these things, but they also had just really creative imaginations. And they just wrote all, they just, they mixed their history with fantasy. What's more likely? Oh yeah, Google Earth. It says, "Look at the seas. You'll see giant sea serp giant serpents." I find that very fascinating. That's a good call. Is that when you look at old ancient maps, like really old maps, they they're completely obviously cartography is obviously a skill and it's a it's a it's a craft, but yet the cartographers decided, hey, let's put a sea monster somewhere over here it's almost like were they bored or were there sea monsters where they wrote, where they drew the pictures of them you know this map could you really use a kraken in this one picture now why unless you know because it's kind of like the the whole thing going back to what i was saying about the the ancient explorers or not even ancient explorers explorers from like five and six hundred years ago They've got a journal that says, I sailed around the whole world, right? That's what Magellan's claimed. Okay, so why would he want to put something in his journal that was completely fictional? Okay, so if there was a lie in his journal, it was that he sailed around the whole world because that makes him look good. If he actually sailed around the whole world and then wrote about fictional beings, that would be stupid. Right, it would discredit the whole journal if he wrote about fictional things when he's really trying to pump himself up. It's more likely that he would be lying about himself than lying about, 
you know, the fact that there was big people around. There's big bones. Like I said, everybody talked about giants. They're not unique to it. So there was giants. Anyways, that's what I got to say about that. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> I've probably talked enough about dinosaurs. Oh, actually, I do have something to promote as well, like like usual. I recorded a podcast last night with Jay Slay, Jeremy Slayden. You guys familiar with Jeremy? He's good. We talked about Israel. We talked about the protests on the college campuses. We talked about the anti-Semitism laws. And we talked about the kind of things that would probably get me in trouble on YouTube. So this is going to be a Rumble exclusive. Because we were saying things that were true that will get you in trouble for saying the things that are true. The, the kind of things that if you notice and you speak aloud, you will get in trouble for. So, so that's going to be a Rumble exclusive. It won't, it won't really be a Rumble exclusive because it, it will just not be on YouTube. It will be on Spotify, it'll be on Apple Podcasts eventually, it'll be on all the other apps, but it will, it will not be on YouTube because, let's just say, if you say certain things on that app, you, you, you're probably going to get in trouble. <laughs> you know, I can't with Jay Slay. Jay Slay is a good dude. He, he does talk about that a lot, and that's why I wanted to talk to him about that because, I mean, literally the stuff that's going on in Israel, and from the biblical perspective, as I like to always bring it back to, like that so many of the issues that are happening in Israel right now, the land of Canaan, Palestine, as, as, as they call it now, people, if people knew their Bibles better, they would know the issues better. Because like Solomon once said, there's nothing new under the sun. The same kind of things are happening there as were happening before. And what's interesting is that people think that, again, you have to support Israel no matter what they do. When God himself did not support Israel, no matter what they did. Because if they transgressed his covenant, out. You were getting out of that land. And that's what happened. Right? It also said that, um, it also said that, that Israel was worse than the other nations around them. Are they worse than the other nations now? I don't know. I mean, not according to the news. Not according to... The right-wing media, left-wing media, but, you know. Um, well, that's the thing. Well, again, that's the we, we, we get into that a little bit about being, yeah. <laughs> well, Net, Netanyahu, I think he was born in Philly or something like that. I mean, it's, put it that way, we get into that. We get into, like, Who's the real people in the land and all that stuff? That's the kind of stuff you can't really talk about because the the Semite stuff and all that kind of stuff. Again, this is why it's important. This is why we had to talk about this. And of course, it's, I mean, obviously it's the sign of the times that we can't talk about this on certain platforms because of literally Congress passed a law about anti-Semitism when the people who have defined Semitism like don't let us won't let us say these things <laughs> again the people the people who you can't talk about might actually be in charge I, i'm just you know just saying yes you're absolutely right maddie absolutely right so we talk about that and so that that will probably be the beginning of next week i'll, I'll put it up there maybe earlier maybe earlier but yeah so that was something we worked on and yeah have you guys watched the Fallout show? I just I did a I did a live stream on YouTube about Fallout. Have you guys checked that out? Javier Melina, father, same last name as Bibby's father. Did you see that um, Israel just kicked out Al Jazeera, the press, out of there? So I guess they don't have free speech in uh, Israel. Just saying, just saying. Um, yeah, have you guys watched Fallout? What do you guys think of that show? If not the sushi, then whose is the America's named after? America, America was named after Amaru. Amaru Ka. So Amaru was the, the, the plume serpent to the South Americans. And so when the, when the European settlers got here, it was already named America. I mean... 
that is such that is one of the most silly things I said. I've talked about that many times. Is that who names anything after some guy's first name? Right? And first of all, his name wasn't America. It was, I think it was, his original name was like Al, Al Garrigo. Al, Al Barigo. Nobody names anything after somebody's first name. Much less a continent, much less two continents. There's no continents on the earth named after some guy. And he wasn't even the first guy to discover it. First of all, people were already there. So I think the people who were there probably already called their home something. I mean, this is this idea that history is, like, our history is so small when the world has been around for a long time. That, like, these places did not have names before. Like, did things got named, like, 500 years ago? Come on. Come on. It's, they, what they claim is this guy discovered the mainland of South America, even though Columbus himself got to the continent I mean, because the islands are kind of considered in the continent, that they didn't name it after Columbus. They named it after Amerigo. Come on. First of all, this guy sailed for the Spanish, right? Just like, just like Columbus did. So wouldn't the crown have some kind of call in naming the place? Everybody else just went with the name. Come on. This is silly. It's silly. I've watched, I've watched uh, Belly of the Beast. Man, I've 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 was I've been friends with uh, Justin Fall on on Facebook. I don't know what he's kind of gone on hiatus. I've been trying to get him to come out of hiatus because I would love to have him on the podcast. Our history has been ma manipulated. Yeah, there's no question about that. No question about that. So somebody said Fallout was great. Have you guys watched Fallout? I, Fallout, I think was it was a was a pretty decent show. Obviously, it was, you know, it's got some gratuitous violence in it. It's certainly TVMA, but this is my this is my take on there. I believe again, like if you guys are probably not unfamiliar with it, it no, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. That I believe we're in Satan short season. And I couldn't help but think like they're they're talking about a like a nuclear fallout, but I was kind of like watching the show, and I was what I was really seeing was that this kind of seems more like a mud flood situation. Like, was is it possible that did what they're showing is something that actually took took part you know took place in our kind of recent history, like eighteen hundreds time timeline, and not actually some fictional timeline where you know, the Cold War went bad and everyone nuked each other. I actually, I have a, um, I probably have a reel to make about Fallout because I have, because I put together a list of things, symbolism in Fallout. But yeah, there's, there's a lot there. The ghouls. <laughs> I watched all eight episodes of Fallout after, so what, so what do you think, stay at home? You think it was good? I mean, it was, it was, I think it was well done. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in this, in the show now. Um, yeah, I mean, put it this way, like, there is, there is parts of it that obviously are not, um, godly. Actually, the whole show's not godly, but it is interesting. Yeah, the, the little season makes the most sense to me right now. I feel like that a lot of people have, you know, have come around to that idea. I think people are coming around because I think that to me, when I start to read the scriptures again, I really cannot, I cannot entertain people talking about the preacher rapture and, and talking about like things like that Jesus didn't say what he meant. I, I, to me, I just can't even take it anymore. Only one, yeah, one, I mean, it's, it, it's a weird show. I mean, but yeah, that's what you expect though. I'm going to be binging so much TV for the research purpose. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's kind of what I do. I always like, like to say that I'm, I feel like my role is the health inspector. That I'm going to go into like a kitchen that I know has rats. For you guys. Because I do want to know the messages in it. And of course, I think that's like... I don't consume content like I once did. I watch 
watch stuff and I try to learn stuff because I'm interested in making content and learning more. But yeah, like so like Fallout it's it's nice when the content doesn't isn't terrible. I'm looking at you Disney Marvel is that I used to like to mine content from the Disney movies, the Marvel movies. And there was a time when I didn't hate it because they were actually not terrible movies. And now they are just awful. You, I cannot watch them anymore. I almost believe that they, they made the movies so bad on purpose because they said, hey, these guys on TikTok and, and Instagram and YouTube are breaking down our movies too good. They're getting... They're getting too smart. I've got an idea. Let's make them awful. They won't even want to watch them. <laughs> I think that's what they've done. The Hunter, the Hunger Games. I mean, yeah, it is funny. I, somebody posted a video about like the Met Gala, and yeah, it, 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 Hunger Games vibes. It it does feel like the Hunger Games once again. The Hunger Games feels like like a little season time. Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange Two, yes. I could like I could have made a million videos about Doctor Strange Two. It's so it's that movie is so on the nose about everything. So you so you believe Ryan that we're that the short season stuff? I I just I just can't get over that. If you, if you understand what Jesus is saying to the apostles, and then you understand what the apostles are saying in their letters, that they're all talking about soon in this generation, once you see that, there's no going back. Like To me, it's, like, it's so obvious that the reason that the apostles believe Jesus was coming back soon is because he told them th their generation. So they didn't know when, but they knew it was going to happen in their lifetime. And that's why they kept on saying soon. Yeah. You should do some on DC. Oh, DC. The DC movies, I would say that the very few of the DC movies are even watchable. They've always been really bad. Well, not always. I mean, like the Batman Begins movies were good. Um, but like the Justice League stuff, complete garbage. What's what's going on, uh, Fittest Flat Earther? The when they did Batman versus Superman, oh my gosh, that that movie was like I, I for you know you forget that you're watching a comic book movie, and that's not in a good way because you're almost like I remember when comic books were fun. This was like watching just a completely dreary, miserable movie, and you're like, this movie is about Batman and Superman, like. You know what I mean? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, this should this should kind of be fun. When they make Batman just a dark jerk, or no, a Superman, Superman at least is supposed to be a little bit light. Oh, it's just it's just so terrible. How big is your faith? If you had no backup, I believe when I had nothing believed in. Um, I mean, obviously, only God knows how big my faith is. But I mean, I believe that. I believe. <laughs> it's also exhausting but exciting as we believers know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know where where are you going with that, Jamie? <laughs> what are your thoughts about the Schofield Bible? Well, I think maybe that is kind of like what people, like, I, I do wonder. I mean, I, I guess it's, it's hard to know exactly why everyone's so influenced in the way that they are about, like, the pre-trib rapture and stuff like that. Because, again, you won't read that in the Bible. You won't read the stuff about supporting Israel no matter what in a Bible, like, just a regular Bible. So when you read that, like, a lot of people believe that it was, it was Darby and Schofield who were literally funded by like the Rothschilds, created this 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 Bible, this study Bible that literally has notes in there that tries to teach wrong doctrine. Is that why? I mean, obviously, it's a it's a lie in in a way that people would want to believe that. 
that I, I've been bringing this up a lot lately that everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Okay. So how can I believe in that? Okay. So then you believe in the pre-trib rapture because what the people who believe in that believe is that we're going to be raptured before anything bad happens. We're not going to suffer. And then we are going to go up to a wedding feast and then we're going to come right back down and then we're going to rule in Jerusalem. You know what that sounds like? What that sounds like to me is what the people who crucified Jesus wanted. They did not want to die and they wanted to rule from Jerusalem. So when they wanted to make Jesus their king on earth and he want, they wanted him to lead a rebellion against the Romans... He sent them away. And you know what? That's why they crucified him. Because they were looking for a king on earth. They were looking for prosperity on earth. And they were looking for, they didn't want to die. They didn't want to suffer. There's nothing new under the sun. So that is what people still want today. They want to be taken away before anything bad happens. And they want heaven on earth and they don't want to have to do anything for it. They don't want to have to suffer for like Jesus suffered. It's, I mean, again, it's, it's poetry. It's cyclical. It's like, again, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, the, the second temple, again, the, I mean, it's, it's crazy to me that, again, when people were talking about a third temple, the Daniel prophecies are about a second temple. Very clearly. The temple that Jesus says is going to be destroyed and left desolate is the one he's pointing at because that's literally how those chapters start. Hey, Jesus, how great is this, ta this temple? That one, the one that's going to have no stone left upon the other one, that one's not going to be good later in your generation. And so then you, like, I, yeah, so that was a, that's, a, that's a good place to pivot. So I made, a, I made a reel about this. Did you guys know, did you guys know that the red heifers, so the red heifers that have been all in the news, red cows, they were sent to Israel, to these rabbis, by a rancher from Texas, who's supposedly a Christian. And I'll say supposedly because he claims to be one, I don't know him, but he, in a news article I read, he said he was very fascinated with the old covenant law, and he thought that was one of his favorite parts, so I should just try to engineer these cows to send them to them in order for them to start sacrificing them. Now, as a Christian, why would you want to do that? Why, like, if, like if you really knew what your Bible said, why would you want to do that? And this is, again, this is if you believe the news. If you believe the news, Hamas attacked Israel because they were going to sacrifice these red cows on the Temple Mount at some point to potentially bring about a third temple. So talk about unintended consequences is that you have Christians trying to help fulfill a prophecy that's not in the Bible. and But their hearts are in the way that in their minds they believe that this third temple leads to a temple for the Antichrist. People who still think that that the Jews in Israel could build a temple and it would be for the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of David. Are you, which Bible are you reading? Because you know that that wouldn't be for him because he hasn't asked for one. He hasn't asked for another temple. Because what it says is that God is no longer going to dwell in, in, in a temple made by human hands. So you should, like, so Christians should know that. And they should want no part in helping bring that along. Because again, like, if they're looking for a temple that some Antichrist is going to create an abomination of desolation in this temple, like, what? And so the unintended consequences of this is potentially a war in Israel. This is what we're told. Protests in college campuses, and now anti-Semitism laws where you're not allowed to talk about what the Bible says. Or it could be a civil rights violation against you. 
for simply pointing out what the Bible says. How about that? How about that? Like, that's crazy. Again, so the, so I've said over and over again, and I will say this again, that your view on the rapture, eschatology, is not a salvation issue. So I'm not going to be too harsh on people who, who still cling to a futurist view, a post-trib view, a mid-trib view. Pre-tribbers, I'm kind of looking at you like, come on, really, but but I'm not but I know you're you're not saved by your faith in the tribulation, the rapture, any of that kind of stuff. But I will say this, it gets dangerous when you know when you know so little about your Bible that you think, hey, if there's a third temple and an antichrist, that means Jesus is coming back soon. Hey, we should probably try to help that along. That is dangerous. That's what I was saying. Like the, so in the podcast, uh, Jay Slay and I, we talk a lot about that, that if people knew what their Bible said, they would not be deceived like this. That's what, that's what Jesus is saying, that let every, let every word of God be true if, if every man was a liar. They're lying to you. God's not. If you were reading a Bible, you would know what it was said, and you, and you would know that this is not right. So, no, it's just the whole, the whole thing is just jacked up. And it's just like that, that people, it's, it's almost like, not almost, it's like the devil is not stupid. So what, so what the devil would do is he would twist scripture, scriptures, he'd manipulate them in order to say something that was advantageous to him and to the wicked people on this earth. So if he said, hey, look, you got to support this country no matter what they do. And then no matter what they're doing, you'll turn a blind eye to it because you don't want to know what they're doing. And then you'll you'll mock college kids because they're supporting terrorism. That sounds kind of like like the father of lies might do that to deceive people. I think that's what's happening. I say that about the ball and the flat earth, LOL, doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe Yeshua Jesus. I agree with that too, but I, but I do believe, yeah, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Amen, brother. It's a day of darkness and not light. And again, I, I was saying this, that the people who are calling for judgment, who are looking forward to judgment day, be careful what you wish for. Because if you're hoping for judgment day, it might just come, and you might not like it. You actually, you probably won't. I mean, that's kind of what the Bible says: is that like when you start looking around and saying all these other people need to be judged, you know, like you should be more patient. You should pray for those people because if God comes in judgment and you're you're trying to judge others, well, that's dangerous. I would caution you on that attack. What's going on, demon racers? I think we can't stop Jesus' divine plan. It was going to happen anyway because of the world's spiritual sick. 2020 exposed that. Well, that is very true. That, well, that's why you don't have to help. Let's just say. Let's just say that the, the futurism has the correct view. You don't have to help the you don't have to help build the third temple in order to help God's prophecy be fulfilled. It's going to happen anyways. God hasn't asked you to do that. Yeah, what I said, so what's kind of funny if you think about the contrast, you know, so they have all those movies about like, um, it was like the Omen, Rosemary's Baby. You have like this, the devil's seed is going to be born and he's going to be like the Antichrist. And so you, you in these movies, you always have like this Catholic priest trying to go kill the Antichrist, right? Okay. God has not asked anyone to take the Antichrist out. Probably because he's already came. <laughs> his name was Nero whose, whose name in Aramaic the gematria of it was 666 by the way he was actually called the beast he claimed, he claimed to be reincarnated in Apollo Apollyon just saying point being is in those movies it's interesting that they tried to go kill the antichrist because they're trying to prevent the end of the world okay that seems actually like a noble cause right <laughs> I mean, it's wrong. It's it's wrong because God didn't go ask you to go kill the Antichrist because that's not how it works. But at least 
it seems like your heart might be in the right place because you don't want the world to end. Meanwhile, the, the dispensationalists say, huh, you know what would be great? The end of the world right now. Let's build the third temple. Maybe we can uh, promote an Antichrist to go in there because then the world would end. Isn't, it, isn't the contrast very stark? I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy to think that, like, like the, that is what the Christian church, the dispensationals, many of them do. Not all of them. But many of them are thinking, like, hmm, if only we'd get the Antichrist going right now, then the world would be end. That would be good. It's not bad to want out of this place. It probably is bad to want what you, like, it is kind of crazy to think about it like that. The people think they have it so bad right now that they would wish for whatever they believe the tribulation would be. When again, like, if I, if I, what I believe, like a lot of people believe, that the tribulation was in the first century, because when you read about what happened to the early Christian church and the apostles and everybody, people being skinned alive, boiled alive, People being used as Roman candles, like lit up like human torches, fed to lions. Okay, so like who would wish that upon the world right now? There's people wishing that. There's people wishing that. I was one of those people and I feel bad about that now because I do think that like I, I know that as in Hebrews it says that we have no permanent residence here anymore. And I would happily leave when God takes me. But God's, it's, that's God's timing, right? That is, that is totally God's timing when we leave this place. It is, it is not, it is not to, for us to hurry this along and to usher in a tribulation. Yeah, the, I just feel like the, I mean, th I mean, this is the world we live in. And I guess if this was the same time, again, there's nothing new under the sun. When you read the New Testament, I always I encourage people just to do this when you read the Bible. Always understand, especially the Gospels, that people are writing the words of, that Jesus spoke to these very specific people. And if, if the things he wasn't saying to them weren't true to them, then they're not true at all. They're not true to people 2,000 years later. So understand that like they have to be true to those people first. And when you read it, it's actually very clear. It's you know, it's actually not very confusing. It's only confusing because we've been taught wrong. It's only confusing because we're we were taught what it said before we ever read it. But when you just read it, it's very clear. And I think that that's why we they literally God is telling people like that I'm trying to give you understanding if you want it, but you have to get it from me. You're not getting it from somebody else. You know, you got to be willing to let the, the word like cut you down to the bone. And once you do that, you will you will you will read the Bible so much clearer and then and things will make sense. This world will make sense to you. I promise you that. Trust but verify. Well, I guess I always say this like that. Don't trust. Don't take my word for it. Definitely don't do that. I mean, I, <laughs> I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. But what I'm saying is, the one thing I know that I'm not wrong about is, read it yourself. If I quote scriptures, go read them, go find the context, question me if you don't, don't agree. And, I, and usually, I'm, I'm, I'm fine to have a dialogue back and forth. Oh, we got a request? Of course. We got, yeah, we got Demon Racers going to join. A special treat. What's up? What's going on, bro? thought I'd jump in on this because it's so interesting, but keep going, what you're saying. No, I was just saying that, I mean, I mean, it's like obviously stuff that we've talked about and we've learned about that, like once you, once you really actually can kind of see what the Bible says, it's like it really is, it's amazing that we, we didn't see it sooner. I'm Dude, so, it really is. I'm so blown so, away by that. And like, and like the crazy part, it's like the, the mindset I was talking about, like when you were mentioning the mindset of the people that want the end of the world to come mm -hmm. now, it's like, it's a lot of times just so selfish and it's not the, the character of Christ at all in, in us because people are so concerned 
with bringing the new temple and wishing the Antichrist would be here. <laughs> like, it's like, a, I get so many requests in my inbox all the time, like, talk about Revelation, talk about the end time, talk about the end. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, it's not love, bro. Like, like you missed the point, and we missed life. And it, and by doing this, and this is funny that you mentioned, like, the Jew, or the, the I can't say that word, the, uh, the people that run Hollywood, will say, mm-hmm. and the people that run Hollywood put out these movies encouraging the uh, appearance of the Antichrist. Yeah. And that's very fascinating when they are constantly encouraging the appearance of the Antichrist because we know who owns Hollywood. We mm-hmm. know the people that don't believe in Christ own Hollywood. Yeah. And those people are encouraging it. It's almost like, why do they want to encourage that, that ideology of, of, of the Antichrist coming when it's like very clear, it's almost like there's an agenda here because they know that if you believe that it hasn't come, then the Christian world view is going to accept all the wickedness and evilness. Yeah. We started accepting mm. it. Right now, like all the Christians, we accept all the wickedness. We Instead of standing up and going, hey, that's not right. We need to stop that. Hey, we yeah. don't approve of that. We go, well, it says it's going to get evil in the end time. Yeah, so right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, that, that's very, it's very, that's very true. It's like that... Again, like that's just the craziest part. I know you you're kind of blown away with that video when I when I learned that 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 literally what I read an article and it said an ev- evangelical from Texas literally said he was fascinated with parts of the Old Testament law. So he's like, "Hey, I could make a cow that good, and I'll send it right over there so they can sacrifice it." And you're like, "What?" Like you know, like li- like literally, like what you know? So like, and then they're using this as. Well, I guess whether you believe this or not, and I don't, I don't really buy this necessarily. But what the news said, and I said I put that art, you know, put that little clip in my video, that Hamas claims that that is why they attacked on October seventh. It makes total sense because it's all. It was, and you know, the, the interesting part is like, did Hamas attack? Right? Because when mm. you really get into it, it's like they talk about that fence being so guarded that it oh, would right. fly over it. Yeah, we. I talked about. I went. I went on. I went. I, t- I did a podcast last night with Jay Slay, and we'll, we won't get too much into that because we, yeah. we said too much. But it's like, as we said, let's just put it. October seventh was sus. <laughs> let's just say we question. We question how it went. So that's why I was saying. That's why I question if if Hamas did that because of that. But I mean, it does actually make sense to me that, like, that if we believe that. It's the tail wagging the dog, right? That they are trying to make it look like the end times. Well, then that actually makes more sense to the people, to the Christians back, the dispensationalists back home saying, oh gosh, the red heifer. See, all the armies are going to surround Israel. It's going to be just like the Bible said, except for, or it's going to be just like people have told us the Bible says, <laughs> because they don't know what it says. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they're going to think it's the end because... That's what it's funny when we were, uh, Vitaly and I were breaking down Truth Unedited's video about, you know, he was talking about like debunking the little season. He was saying, we're not in Satan's little season, we're in his big season because deception is crazy because it's so obvious we're in the end times. I was like, do you kind of hear what you just said? It's, <laughs> it's, it's so deceiving that it's completely obvious that all these things are happening when, yeah. are you not giving your, your enemy enough you know, respect the fact that he's not stupid. So if it's so obvious, is it is it is this like a judo move where he's using our momentum, saying, "Oh, well, all this stuff is happening," so therefore, you know, like let's yeah, let's just let it just all happen, right? Totally feels like it, and I, I think it does. And I and I get comments. I had a, a gentleman in my uh, uh, like commented and, and wrote me a message like. Hey, and it was really good, and blah blah blah. And these people want to send me all like, "Oh, the Antichrist is coming," and all this stuff. And you know, bro, I've seen all this stuff. I watch all of it. I watch every single video about the Antichrist. Trust me, I watch. I mm. watch all of them. Okay, mm. I watch every sign. I know that it, in in Muslim language, I know in Hebrew language, I know in all the different things, all the different signs. But like, when you look at history, it's a so much bigger of a sign. Mm. When you look at history, you're like. There's a sign that was bigger than all the signs that we have right now alluding to the things going on. Just read the writings of Josephus and you're already yeah. going to be like, you're just going to be like, that sounds like Revelation happened, yo. Like it straight up sounds like there was water. There was blood. He said, yeah. the, the seas looked like blood. It looked like seas of blood. He said there were so many bodies. It says it was hard to even walk around. It says that there was earthquakes that opened up wherever the Jews went. He said the earth opened up and swallowed those cities. That happened in multiple places. 
you're like, that's doesn't it say earthquakes and famines and rumors of war well, and there was war and you're just like. Well, you know what? Okay. You know what they were saying. I, and it's funny. So I I was listening to an old sermon by R. C. Sproul, and he was saying like. Everybody always says this every few years or every year, all the time, that we're in the birth pains because guess what? There's there's wars, there's rumors of wars, there's famines or all these. That is not very specific to anything, right? So, so it's only specific if it's in your lifetime. It's kind of like if you were living in a time of peace and then somebody told you this was going to happen in your generation. So then when you started to see false Christ, you started to see wars, rumors of wars, you started to see famine, and you started to see all the earthquakes and things, the signs in the heavens, then you would know because it's coming in your lifetime. So, but when it's all the way through like thousands of years, yeah, well, I've, like, is that really any signs to look for? You know, so it's funny, I, I, I quoted this the other day, and it's in, it's, it's in 1 John 2, and so John is saying, you guys are aware that an Antichrist is coming. So we know it's the last hour. Or and he says, so it's, it's the last hour, so we know an Antichrist is coming. And he says that there has been many Antichrists already, so we, yeah. know, it's, we know it's the last hour. And so, like, literally, you think about it. So John is, is writing that because Jesus was telling him one of the signs of the end is there'll be fa- false Christs and false prophets. So that's what Sean's saying. It's like we know there's going to be one, but there's already been many, so we know it's the last hour. And it's kind of like in that kind of way, you're like, how do you get like? And people say, well, who's the Antichrist? And it's like, well, John already was saying that there was already many, and then there was another one coming, and it was the last hour. It's kind of like you really do have to say, was he wrong? That's a real good question. Was he was he was he wrong? I mean, that's the thing. Like, was he wrong when he was saying all these things? And and the thing that really blows me away, like, I, I don't know why this, like I said, again, how, how we ever missed this. Daniel says, do not seal up this book because, or no, seal this book up until the times of the end. Times and half again. Oh, no, he was saying, uh, Gabriel told them, because he, he gave them the prophet, oh, yeah, prophecy yeah, of the end times. Yeah, he says, yeah. seal this book up because it's not for you. It's going to happen in the end times. Then Jesus, yeah. Jesus gets to his ministry. He's quoting from Daniel. <laughs> he's, literally, he's literally quoting from the part they told them to seal up. And then when Revelation's written, the angel tells John, do not seal up this book because the time is at hand. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so the prophecy that was 500-ish years, they said seal that one up. But Revelation, the one that's thousands of years into the future, don't seal, don't seal this book up. Oh, it's so it's so in in your face in so many ways. I think, and I think I think it's really fascinating the um the way that the verses like you know it says like like so many of the verses that you try to rationalize like that will happen today. It talks about the saints being beheaded for yeah. their for their word, mm-hmm. like in their testimony. It says they they will be beheaded for their testimony. Mm-hmm. That means your 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 like account, like what you're saying, the things you witnessed, things you experienced, right? Mm-hmm. So like. That like we take it now, we have testimonies, but testimonies back then meant like eyewitness account kind of. Mm-hmm. So it was like the saints were being beheaded for their testimony. Like we don't have chopping blocks, and I don't think we're gonna go back to the to the guillotines anytime soon. Well, if you watch like, if you watch the Left Behind movies, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that's a, that's a really funny. I love that idea. I saw like some uh, what was it like some big uh, company like Chanel or something released like there's somebody did some photo shoot with a guillotine that said like one of those big uh like gucci or something on the guillotine and it was just like it was like oh no balenciaga it's, it's, yeah, yeah balenciaga or something like that it was like the guillotines they're bringing them back guys like but like it's talking about that the saints being beheaded dude they were beheaded yeah it was it already happened they already got their heads chopped off it talks about the city of seven hills rome yeah. There is only one place called the City of Seven Hills, and if you try to interpret any other way, it just sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Like it, just, it doesn't really work. And so there's a lot of things in the revelationary text that you've got to have revelation to understand. But it's also the fact that it already happened, and there's so much to that it already happening. Right. Like, it talked about, like, they said, Lord, how long would you wait until, until you come back to redeem your saints? Mm-hmm. Bro. 
Can't wait that long. Right. Well, well, I think that's the thing that I, I again, that, that's one of those, the things that I think really kind of tipped it off to me when it was like that. So he's writing to these seven, like as Vitaly and I and you talked about it, it's like he's writing to these seven churches that no longer exist. Yeah. Right. So like, so explain to me how Jesus is not a, a liar if he said he was coming back to them and he didn't. They don't exist anymore. Like I said, just think about this view of the like just Christianity as a whole is that you have these churches. John is writing letters to them, and he said this message came directly from the Lord. I'm recounting. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you what He said to you, and so these people obviously are reading it and they're believing it, and they are probably telling everyone. Repent. It's happening soon. It's happening soon. And again, like this is the whole message of the gospel, like like the discipleship of the nations. It's going to happen soon. You have to repent. Like the day of the Lord is coming. What if it didn't come? What if it didn't come? Would we would we be here on this live stream talking about what's in the Bible right now or not? Or would it or would have this, this or whatever this small sect of Judaism would have died out? Because it wouldn't have been true. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, because people would have known. Those people thought their their Lord was coming back. And he never did. Yeah. They he, they thought judgment was coming soon. It never happened. But it yep. did. But it but it did happen. It did. I guess that it did happen. Because for one, they're not there anymore. <laughs> you know? They're not there anymore. So so it either happened or... It, so, so it either happened to them or it did not happen to them. And that's what people don't understand. Like the dispensational view that... These church, these are church ages. Well, again, if it's not for them, well, how is it for us? If if Jesus told the apostles their generation and it didn't happen, then how is his promise as good to you if he didn't keep his word to them? Dude, and here's here's an interesting tip. Two people I read your guys' comments. Two of them said that um, it used to give you so much fear waiting for a revelation. Mm-hmm. Uh, to happen mm-hmm. and then somebody said we're on the edge of apostasy <laughs> like and so um like we're right on the edge of it uh but like I, I would like to to comment on those two things and and one understanding of those that that consideration of the fear that is wrapped up in um this concept of of the rapture coming okay mm-hmm. it, the rapture coming has led to the most deplorable acts of depravity in the church i think ever Honestly, because it is spun out this concept of we can sin and we're forgiven. It's okay. The end of the world's coming. All the terrible stuff can happen. And it's fine. It's, it's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yeah. it's given us an excuse to not walk righteously mm-hmm. and not walk holy. It's given us the biggest excuse, guys. And this is so dangerous. And this is why it's so dangerous. And this is what has led to the collapsing of a lot of the church uh, like uh, ethics. Because... We think it's all done. We think it's it's all done and it's going to come to an end. It's all going to blow up. So just keep living your life how it is, bro. You are not to live your life how it is. Yeah. You are called to a level of righteousness. Like 100%, the Bible says it over and over and over. And, and if you don't walk in that righteousness, like you're open to demonic influence, which is what's happened to the whole world. And so like, because we think it's all just going to burn anyways. And it's all going to like, oh, you know, Jesus, come back. You want suffering? Bro. You think Jesus is coming back, and so you don't give the effort to be the Christian you need to be now because you think it's all going to get destroyed. That's the lie. They want you to believe Jesus is coming back. Just let it all burn. Don't stop caring about other people. Stop loving other people. Stop having children. Stop focusing on healing people and helping people and loving people. Focus on the end of the world's coming, and don't love everyone like Jesus told you to do. Okay? Yeah. Like, don't live your life in love like you were supposed to do, like the Christian value that jesus taught is it says jesus is the first of many brethren guys mm. the first of many brethren you and i are supposed to be just like jesus we're supposed to be like jesus like not just what would jesus do wear your little stupid bracelet like literally be like him mm. we're, supposed to, we're supposed to pray like him we're supposed to love like him we're supposed to heal like him but we forget all that and we go oh it's fine just you know the end of the world's coming and we, we neglect our morals and our ethics because of that and that's why the whole this whole rapture stuff is like so i think so, can be so dangerous isn't it, isn't it funny brian too that we were talking about like the um like let's just just let's just talk about it. so like where a lot of people get is the left behind series okay <laughs> yeah isn't it so like 
I remember this when I was in, 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 in school, I went to Christian school and I remember this, like that they had those really crappy left behind movies before they made like the Kirk Cameron ones. And they remember they had like the 70s song and they had the song, you've been left behind, you know, like this really hippy dippy, uh, like 1970s song. And so we, we've, we've talked about that, that the verses when they talk about, you know, like two people go working on in a mill, two people in a field, two people in bed. And one's taken and one's left. You've been left behind. Well, good. You are you, like you should be thanking God that you were left behind because what the Bible says is like Brian. Brian, what did the apostles? What, what happened? What did what did they ask Jesus after that? They said, "Where will they be taken, Lord? Where will they be taken?" And he says, "Where their bodies lie, the vultures will <laughs> gather. They're taken to death, guys. They're I know. Taken into the clouds. It, that you when you are taken." When you are left behind, that's great because the ones that are taken get taken into death. Yeah, straight up, you die. I think that's the thing. That's I think that's the craziest part. It's that people, like you said, it, it's so very obvious that like that what is what is coming is judgment. Yes. Like J- Jesus was coming. coming in judgment, and that's why he was saying, "If you're not ready, I'm coming at you like like a thief in the night." He's not saying. I'm coming at you to save you. I'm coming at you with a thief, like a thief. And so when, yeah. so that's why the people that were taken, even so, like you go into like the, the, um, the, the wine press is about, they're taken to the wine press. The, the reapers first, they're that's taken the to the great wine press. So like that's in this, so that's what happens is all the, all the people are taken to this place. And you think about it, like if the place was Jerusalem, that place was running with blood was burned down, was made desolate, and it was like, and and his people were taken to a left, went left. They got out of that place. And it's like, to me, it's like one of those things where like, yes, when all the Hollywood movies are talking about this thing from the Bible, you can be sure that it's not correct. Just like, the Left Behind movies are about as accurate as the Noah movie with Russell Crowe. You know what I mean? If Don't get your doctrine from it. Actually read what it says. It's like, yeah, that's... Like it, that's such the craziest thing is that people like hoping to not be left behind when literally the apostles knew I don't want to go where the <laughs> where the birds are. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and another interesting thing is like the the way it's set up now, where the where it is that the the northern wall that you have to come through that Jesus was supposed to come through. It's a cemetery now, guys. I don't know if y'all know this. He can't come through it apparently to the Jewish tradition because he can't walk over dead bodies or something. They made a cemetery there. So so Jesus, like, when he comes, can't even pass through the area that he's supposedly supposed to pass through, which is, like, the northern wall thing. I don't know if you know about that, JT, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, they, but they built, they said that he, the king has to come through the northern wall, and it's, like, some, it's a prophecy that was fulfilled, but we're, like, still waiting for it to be fulfilled. And now it's a cemetery. They built a cemetery there, to, and it's just a bunch of dead people. Like, and so, like, and there's, like, this thing, and so they're, like, well, maybe, maybe the wall could crack, and there will be an earthquake, and then it will open up, and all the dead people, and then Jesus could come through. And they yeah. have to, like, you have to rationalize all these things to try to make up these concepts for it to work based on these traditions that are just ridiculous. And if you look at Jewish traditions, like, guys, it is absurd. I just watched a video of some Jewish dude, and he was, like, talking about how when they make coffee on the Sabbath. I they, saw that. They, have, they the coffee with <laughs> Yeah, it was it was basically like trying to look, find loopholes in the law. Oh my gosh, and it's so funny because they're like, we pour it in a cup, and then we pour the hot water into that cup, and then we pour that cup into the coffee. So that way, we're not pouring the water directly into the coffee, we're pouring it into another cup first, because that would be considered cooking if we poured it directly into the coffee. It's... So we, pour, we boil water, pour it in a hot cup, hot cup into the other cup. And that's how we make coffee because we're Jewish. And it's, you're like, oh, these are this is definitely they're circumventing the Lord's. Oh, I'm so glad God is looking down at these Jewish people. Yeah. Like, you're right. You're you, so right. Good job, th- sons of God. That's you're a good. That's a good example of like when Jesus taught how he talked to the Pharisees, because yeah. it's like because that's that's the kind of stuff that they would do is like they would put burdens yeah. on people and make like make the thing about nothing about normal people. Like that, you could not live like that, and I think that's I think that that's exactly what it is. It's like that they would find ways where it's like that they would they would diss on Jesus for healing people on the Sabbath. Yeah. Meanwhile, they had all kinds of other things where they would say like literally like the whole the, like the parable of the Good Samaritan was like that the Pharisees would not even walk across the road when somebody's dying on the road, 
because that might be working. Yep. And, you know? and, oh, and also the, the funny laws that they have today, like it's actually considered working if it's electrical. So for their coffee, they can't have they can't press the button to pour the coffee out because that's work. Oh, yeah, to pump it. So they have to pump. So you actually have to do more work than the electrical button. Okay, and then they like they had another one where it's a light, and they have to turn the light on the night before, and it's a sleeve that you uh turn you turn it, and it turns the light on. It literally turns this sleeve over this light, and so you physically have to turn it rather than just hit a flip or flip a switch with one finger. And so they're like, oh, but this is circumventing us flipping a switch, and the elevators have to go up. And good thing God is watching, Jews. Good thing God is watching, and He is so proud that you guys are making sure to turn your little lights which you pump your coffee and pour it in another cup versus another cup like dude that is straight religion that is not well, that is not well it's also that like do, do, do people know, do people know how many old covenant laws there are I don't think people know and I don't it, think people study them it's six it's 613 Six hundred and thirteen. So that that's the that's the one people when people like try to like you know the, the Torah keepers on our like come on our stuff and say oh you got to keep the commandments and I was like okay so which ones do you guys keep the convenient ones yeah. to you because yeah. like as Paul said you got to keep all of them or you know because if you want to be under that you have to do all of it yeah or you, or you could live under grace and obviously accept God's gift I mean the point is you can't live on you can't you can't do the six thirteen because again like. That stuff does not make sense here when obviously part of it is keeping the feasts and the festival, literally going to sacrifice at a temple. There's no temple. Again, like that's what that's what the whole thing, the nonsensical thing about the third temple stuff is. It's destroyed. They can't even make their sacrifices. It was made desolate. That's why I said, how much more desolate could it be than what it is now? Like literally there's a there's a mosque there now. You know what I mean? Like, could it be more desolate than it is right now? But like I said, it, it does, it just feels like that this is a, this is, I feel like that this is, again, this is like, there's nothing new under the sun where like you have, you have the flesh versus spirit. So the, so literally it was always about God's promises and it wasn't about being perfect to the law. It was about believing God and, and walking in faith and, and believing yeah. in what he promised them versus somebody trying to find loopholes in the law in order to do something physically in order to be okay and like yeah. that, like that's still the battle we're in right now. And that's what I said. The I crazy, the, the crazy thing to me is, this is, people are going to hate that I say this, especially who are not in agreement with where we're at, is that the people who believe in like the 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 Schofield, Darby pre-trib rapture, where we're going to be raptured up and then we're going to come right back down and then we're going to rule in the millennial reign in Jerusalem on the earth. That kind of mindset is the very same one that got Jesus crucified in the first place. Is because yeah. they wanted, those people did not want to suffer. They wanted to be lifted out of oppression from under the Romans. And they wanted to rule in Jerusalem as kings. Or, or with the king. And so that is what the Christian church right now wants. And they don't think they should have to suffer like he did. And so, so when he showed up to those people... They said, they gave, remember, remember the difference is, so when he was being, when he was up in front of Pilate, he gave, you know, he, Pilate said, I don't want to crucify him. Actually, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give myself an out and you guys an out. You can have back this guy, a revolutionary, re, a guy who led a rebellion, Barabbas, who was literally a murderer, or you can have Jesus. And they said, give us Barabbas. Crucify him, crucify him. And then he says, well, I'm going to wash my hands of this innocent blood. And they said, we want the blood on us and on our yeah. children. Meanwhile, now you have people trying to say that they're those, they're those they're people, Israelites. but they don't want to accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but isn't the crazy thing, so like the, the reason they wanted Barabbas back is because Barabbas was re wanted to lead a earthly rebellion against the Romans. And Jesus didn't want to. Jesus wasn't offering that. Jesus was offering so much more than that. But they're looking at what's right in front of them. They're looking at all the fleshly things. Again, they want to go to heaven, but they do not want to die. That's, yep. That is what. That is exactly what people want today. It has not changed. I think, it, I think it's comical when everybody's like, I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you 
Yeah, I don't know if you want to really say that you got that title because, like, there's a title. There's some. There's some condemnations that come along with that at this point now. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's the crazy part. Again, is isn't it crazy that you say like? I was saying like, isn't it interesting how when Jesus is telling the Pharisees when he's saying that you you guys tell yourselves you would not you would not crucify you you would not kill the prophets like your fathers did, and he's like, meanwhile you're admitting that you're the sons of the people who killed the prophets, and he's like, and I'll tell you this, I'm going to send you prophets that you will kill, so all that innocent blood will be on your hands. Then he did, and then they did, and so then the same way that they say we want this blood on our hands. Now the people who are claiming to be those people are claiming that they don't want that blood on their hands. How isn't that like? Isn't that kind of a really like wow? Like, it makes perfect wow. sense. It's very much a wow. You know, I think somebody commented they they wrote that like that their Jewish friends had to um, leave the oven on all day. <laughs> like, what our friends commented like leave the oven on all day the day before and like make sure that it doesn't burn down the house or something. Like, and so like you just leave it on if they wanted to cook something or whatever. I think it's just hilarious. But yeah, no, the. Uh, that like all of that, dude, all of that stuff that like the Lord, the Lord looks down on it. And I, and I just wonder like God, you, the Jews killed Jesus. And right now it's illegal. They're debating. It's illegal. I don't know if you saw that, but on, um, live, uh, whatever wire, daily wire, they said that they kicked Candace, Candace Owens off the channel, daily wire, for yeah. saying anti-Semitic things. And so Candace Owens just got kicked off. And so, like, what's even more interesting is, like, Candace Owens gets kicked off for saying subtly anti-Semitic stuff. And now they're debating saying that is Jesus is king. Oh, Christ is king. Yeah, Christ is king. Christ is king is now a is now an anti-Semitic statement that they're saying that is, like, hate speech. They're trying to, like, work that into, like, a form of hate speech. And everybody still, meanwhile, is going... Guys, the Jews are God's chosen people. <laughs> like, I want to be well, like, no. again, it's, it, com- it comes from like this is this is from Jose when it says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When it's like, if you know what your Bible says, like you will not be tripped up by this stuff. But I mean, but but when you're willing to listen to you know pastors driving really nice cars and really expensive suits, and they're saying, yeah. well, you got to support Israel no matter what. Well, they don't need to go look any further than that. And so, yep. like, even like, so even on the Daily Wire, Andrew Claven, I guess, he's like, you know, supposedly he's a Messianic Jew. And so he believed, you know, he's supposedly a Christian. And even he agreed that the way Christ was saying Christ is king was anti Semitic. And you're like, wow. Like, you know, I mean, it really is. It's like, does the truth matter, though? That's why I said, I've, I said, I think the, the craziest part to me is like the Ben Shapiro's famous phrases. Facts don't care about your feelings. Oh, yeah. Same what about that fact? Because that's a fact. About- like, that is a fact. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so so your feelings matter a little bit more than that fact? No, they don't. They Very don't. Questionable. I want to read a Bible verse that, um, that will soon be illegal, guys. It will be a felony. It's actually borderline a felony right now to read. I want to read this because soon it's going to be taken out of your Bibles probably. Revelation 3, 9, Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but they do lie. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, like, soon that's going to be a felony that I just read. I just, Wait, but you know the crazy, here's, here's, the, here's the crazy thing about that verse. And this is what I think people get, don't, don't understand. Again, that, that, guess what? Abraham was not Jewish. Does it, did everyone know that? Like he was not he was not Jewish, but he was counted as righteous because he believed, right? He he was counted righteous before he got circumcised, right? Because he believed in God's promises. So what Jesus literally literally, literally told the Pharisees when they were claiming to be children when they were when they were claiming to be children of Abraham, he said, "If you were children of Abraham, you'd be doing the same works as Abraham, but you don't you you are denying me." And I was the promise of Abraham. So the, to, to me, like, I think what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about people who probably can trace their lineage back to the sons of Jacob, who literally would be considered Jewish. But it's like the being, like as it says in Romans 2, that, that being Jewish was about circumcision of the heart. Nobody is, nobody is a Jew who's just circumcised on the outside, but it's on the inside because if you believe then that is what is like that is the whole point is like it's about belief so like you can say that i think that's what when paul talks about like 
getting into vain disputes about genealogies and things like unprofitable things like that because he's trying to say stop worrying about who your family is like this is about like are you do you want to be in the eternal kingdom like yeah, exactly. and that, and i think yeah. and i think the thing that, that bothers me the most is this this the dispensational view that that the that jesus did not do all the things he promised yet you know what I mean? Because I think they're saying, like, well, Jesus, well, they still got to gather the people together and they still got to do this. And he's got and he's like, he's still got to save them. And it's like, what do you think he was there to do when he came? When he was when he was offering everyone uh, repentance for sin, you know, offering them forgiveness for sins and eternal life. Forever. And then but like, but so so what they're trying to say is that, oh, well, he's still got to do all these other things. And then he then he'll have kept his promises. It's like to me. It's like no. When he when he ascended to the right hand, he had kept all his promises. He'd yep. get. He'd have. He had all authority at that point. And then literally, it's like he gave it to us. Yeah. So then, so literally, then through faith in him, all the promises are fulfilled through him. And so if yeah. you're if you're in him, then yes, he was the promise. He is the promise. Still today, and I think yep. that, I think that's I think to me that's the really the troubling part is that you have you literally have people in in the, um, in supposedly Christian churches trying to act like that there's still two covenants, like there's separate there's separate covenants when it's like you, what you're trying to say is that what he did was not enough for them. Yeah. Yep. And it, and that, that it's continued on. And like just so you guys know, like God changes His mind, y'all. Like, God changes his mind. He changed his mind. He repented when he flooded the earth. Okay? Like, what, like what do you, what else? Well, he changed, well, he, the funny thing about that is, like, that when you see through all the, through the Bible, especially the Old Testament, where it's like, God made a promise Moses, to, God, God, made God made a promise Moses. to, but, but he made a promise to Abraham, and then he was going to kill all the Israelites except for Moses, because he would have still been keeping his promise because Moses would have been, because he, he was saying, "I'm going to start a new nation through you," yeah. and then it's like, so then later on you get to the point of like that you get to King David, and he's, there's, it says more than one time in the in the Old Testament that it's like, if it wasn't for David, I would, I would get rid of all y'all, you know, like that, like so that's kind of like the thing where it's like that. That's why you understand that that all the promises are fulfilled through Jesus, because. So no matter what happens now, he's already kept his promise. Yeah, you know, I, like I want to read it. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to. I want to read one more uh, illegal, soon to be illegal verse, guys. This will now be a felony to read this. So I'm gonna read it publicly <laughs> while we still can. Revelation two nine. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemies of them which say they are Jews and are not. I just wanted to read that one. And you know, and, and it was, and, like, and that was spoken by a Jew. Because <laughs> Jesus, because yeah. Jesus, because yeah. Jesus was, just, hello, Jesus was Jewish. So it's like, this is not anti-Semitic. Realizing, hey, wait, the, these people that say they are Jews are not. Like these guys that are like pouring their coffee onto other water and other cups are not serving the same God that we're all serving. Not the Jesus, not the, the Lord of the universe that Jesus came for. These are, these, like God fulfilled his promise when he sent Jesus. You think after they killed Jesus, God was like, it's okay. Thanks for killing my son, my only begotten son. I, I forgive you guys, and I'm still going to move forward with everything. No, he had his wrath, and he poured it out on him right then. No, like, right it's, then. well, I think that. Like, so that like, I, I was saying that, you know, the happened. the one thing that people don't get. I said re, when you read the uh, the parables again, and you understand, like I said, I think the one that's the most clear about that is the one about the un, un, the, the the wicked tenants. When it was like, yeah. the owner had a vineyard. He was trying to get fruit from the tenants. They wouldn't give it to him. He keeps sending servants to get it from him. They would. They were rejecting his servants. Then eventually he sent his son. They said, hey, this is the heir. Let's kill him and we'll take the vineyard for ourselves. They killed him. And then he said, Jesus says, and now what would the owner do? He will destroy those wicked tenants and he will give the vineyard to someone else. And yeah. so like, so, under, yeah, so understanding that the people who nailed Jesus to the cross... That was the wicked generation he was talking about. I mean, like, I mean, how much more clear does it need to be that, like, that that, that was the crazy part is, like, did they did know. I mean, I think to me that when you read that parable, they did know who he was. They did. They totally knew. They knew who he was, and then that is why they did what they did. 
So like, so understanding in that way, like, because some people just think, oh, well, these people just believe the Old Testament and they don't believe the New Testament. Like that's, that's the naive view of the church. And so like one day they'll notice that who he was. But again, when he said, when he says that they'll, they'll see who they, they pierce and they'll mourn the people who pierced him saw the Romans yep. and the people who crucified him. And, he, and God poured out his wrath on him, guys, and it was it happened. And you just got to read history, guys. Y'all don't read history, though. That's the thing. They don't want you to read history in church. They just want you to stick to the narrative that they feed you. Just read a little bit of history. My people perish for lack of knowledge, y'all. Yeah. Like, read some history. Read Josephus. Go read some, like, historical documents. Go read the stuff that happened after Jesus died. It's out there, by the way. For those that don't know, you can find out what happened after Jesus died in Josephus' writings. And other things, and in Roman mm-hmm. records. So, like, you can go check it out and read what happened, bro. It sounds like Revelation happened a whole lot when you start reading it. And so it's like, because God poured out his wrath on the people of the Jews that say they are Jews and are not now. Okay, so, like, I don't know what the Jews that are doing right now are being. Like, it's very <laughs> interesting because they're not doing... They're, I don't know about pouring coffee into coffee, and I don't know about turning light bulbs and flipping light switches or pushing buttons on an elevator or leaving your oven open and leaving it running is somehow pleasing to the Lord God, creator of the universe. And he's looking down there going, wow, thank, good job. Good job you poured that in another cup. Like, it's just so <laughs> absurd. And you are, and people that are like, I support Israel. It's like, you're literally saying, I support this ridiculous religious like craziness that they do like, yeah study it's a jewish religion y'all like study it and then and then come back and be like oh i support all this yeah because then you're gonna feel like a fool when you know what it's really well the, there because you're like, i think i think at the end of the day i think that's what it comes down to is the fact that that they yeah, like as you said they my people perish for lack of knowledge because they don't know they don't want to know again they, they would they would rather believe what's comfortable to them they'd rather believe somebody else who told them this is all you got to do and again, yeah. they, like in the same kind of ways, they want to find the loophole to get to heaven. Like, yeah, oh, I just got to, yeah. Sacrifice. So I don't, I don't, I can't, I got to put the cough, I got to put the hot water in another cup. Yeah. Fine. I'll just do that. Brian, anyways, on that note, I got to, I got to run. It's, um, it's, it's late on the East Coast. It's already 8, 8 p.m. <laughs> but man, great talking to you, brother. Hey, Bye. once again, if you guys want to hear, I, I started this off by promoting our dinosaur uh, podcast. Oh, that's what we were supposed to be talking about? No, no, I, I talked about that enough. I said I, I, I've spoken enough about dinosaurs for, for, the, for a minute. But yeah, guys, check that out on YouTube, Decoding Babylon. I got my buddy uh, Voice of Reasons on there. Luke, we talked about dinosaurs, and I think it was um, it was more interesting than you might believe because we're like, why do people care about dinosaurs? It's important. It's more important it's than you think. It's very important. <laughs> and we all have sort of subtly different views. So it's yeah, cool. it was good. It was good, man. All right, brother. God bless you. God bless you guys at home. Love y'all.